The output format is again really for debugging, you should keep it at RDFXML. Graph li layout is helpful primarily for viewing manifests. When you get a very large manifest, you don't really want to sit and drag around individual elements so they don't include each other. So you can just select different layouts and see how which one of them works better. Help, preference settings, this is a very useful feature. These are, these are all the preferences that you can modify in the Flux properties file and see it says current preference settings, cut and paste into Flux properties, modify and restart to change. So you can literally cut and paste this entire file, modify the parts that you want, restart Flux and it will take effect. And as you can see, we've modified only a few, but, but there are many other options that you can, you can modify here. Uh, the most useful for experimenters are the images, right? So as you can, I mean, this, my, my instance of Flux is a little bit different from the one you're using, uh, but as you define new images and you want to make them usable through Flux, this is where you do it. You, uh, you say, base, you know, in your Flux.properties file, I think you have three images defined. And each image is defined by um, a, a name like this. It's defined by a URL where it can be found. And it's defined by uh, a hash. So we can make sure that you, you tell us what the hash is and we'll check it before we use that image. So if anybody modified it, we'll, we won't launch it. Right, because it, it's a real risk. Somebody can overwrite your image and and uh, and cause trouble. Uh, there's various things. Uh, this launches a browser window into the help, so you should be able to use that. And there's some release notes. Check this once in a while, because we add things as we ch modify the behavior of flukes. We add notes here, so you can check to see what's changed since the last time you used it. Okay. So I'm going to go back to. Excuse me. I'm going to go back to the presentation so we can start actually drawing our own slices. Um, so let's just, uh, uh, these are a few questions, you know, what do I get if I just create a standalone node? You get a single compute node that's just connected to the public internet. If you connect two nodes together, you get two nodes that have connections both to the internet and they have a backplane connection to each other, either within one rack or across, across multiple racks. Um, you can control the address assignment on those interfaces, but you cannot control the address assignment for the, for the public IP. That's dependent on the rack where, uh, where, uh, where, where your slice uh, is, where, or where that resource is, part of that slice. As I said, we recommend that you use RFC 1918 addresses. If you create a standalone node group just by itself, basically you just get some number of nodes facing the internet. Uh, you can add a backplane to it by adding a broadcast link like I showed you and linking it to the node group and you can add address assignment. So the address assignment with node groups works you know, in, a, in a very simple fashion. Uh, you, when, you create, when you create a node group, when you create a node group and you link it like this and you want to have specific addresses within, within that node group, you, know, you say however many nodes you want to have, let's say 10, uh, and you say 172, 16, 100, 10, 24. The first node will have a dot 10, the second dot 11, dot 12, dot 13, and so on. And it will tell you if you were, you know, if you say 300, uh, yeah, you can't do that, right? Because you're going to run out of that subnet. So. Okay. Can I tell which interface in the node will be ETH1, ETH2, and so on? No, nor should you really care. Um, the, we will take care of the assignment so that it's proper. So if you think node 1 is connected to node 2 and they have a common, uh, uh, common uh, address space, then they will. But whether it's going to be ETH1 on one and ETH2 on the other is, is really of no consequence here. Um, now, domain binding is, again, it's a specific feature of Exogeny. You can decide uh, which elements of your slice land on which rack. And, uh, and the Orca will attempt to, uh, Exogeny, the, the test bit Orca, the software, will attempt to, uh, to satisfy that request. If you leave your request unbound, it will try to find available resources within the test bed. Um, as I said, the interact slices can only be done via XOSM. So for instance, I can say, can I please have something like this? And I will bind this group to one rack. 
and I will bind this group to another rack then and I can sort of right click to check right so this is domain then if the resources are available Orca will find the, will not only get the resources for your individual racks it will actually provision a path through NLR for you uh, uh, to do that So this, this slide example kind of shows you what to expect if you have a fairly complex slice. So this slice has a, you know, has a, has a node group, actually it just had two nodes in it, but it's still a node group connected to a node here and a node here. And these two were in one rack and this one was in another rack. When you get a slice, it, gets, it gives you something like this. So these two nodes are this node group, right? As you can see, they have links going back here and links going back here to this node. And then there's these two links that are interdomain between two racks, right? That's this link and this link here and here, right? And you can right-click on all these elements of the manifest to kind of uh, to to help the system will explain what they are, what the parameters are, and so on and so forth. So at, uh, let's uh, let's get to creating slices, and then I'll come back because we we have half an hour left. So. Why don't we uh, click File New, right? You know, I don't know what you've drawn for your slices right now, uh, but let's go and click File New. And, uh, you know, draw your own slice. Uh, don't, don't get greedy. We don't have that many resources. Try, you know, a few VLANs, a few nodes, maybe a node group if you want, maybe a broadcast link, something not, not too large. Um, it says, don't forget to assign IP addresses so that you can actually test. You know, if you forget to assign IP address, that's fine. The, the, you know, the point of Genie is that you don't have to have an active layer 3 configuration that you're using. Uh, you should be able to run some other protocol on top of it. But if you want to use IP, you have that option. All right, so I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to draw a triangle, but you know, don't have to be limited to that. But as I said, you know, if, you, if you each take maybe five, six nodes, that's probably going to be plenty because there's about 25 people here. Um, you can select which controller you're talking to, right? So ExoSum is this first one. You also should have the Nikta controller. Um, if you want to have a slice, if you want to be able to have bragging rights today that you create a slice in Australia, go ahead and select Nikta. All right? Uh, if not, continue using ExoSum. Um, if you want to do an interdomain slice, please do. We are limited in number of VLANs, so it's kind of first come, first serve. If all of you try to create slices between, for instance, Renzi and BBN, only 10 will succeed. The rest, you will, the system will tell you the resources are not available. Um, but if you want to try it, please do. Uh, you know, you, you do it like this, right? As I showed, you can say this is a BBN, uh, this is a, a Renzi, uh, and I don't know, this one's also a BBN. You can also use the Duke rack today. So there's a Duke rack. So, you know, I could in principle create a triangle across three racks if, you wanted, if I wanted to, like this, right? Um, uh, use this image, uh, use the, uh, uh, let's see, I, I think I had it in the presentation, let me just show you, make sure that you are doing it right, because that's the image that's cached and it will be the fastest to stand up. Um, so select the size, ooh, select the size that's M1 large, and select this image from the available images. All right, M1 large and, and DEB6 to GZ file system. Uh, it's a it's the image that we use for a variety of things. It's basically it's a Debian 6 2 gigabyte image. The name typically suggests what it is. And I will talk in a little bit once we launch the slices. I will talk in a little bit about uh, what um, uh, a little bit more about how to provision images. But um, yeah, so create your slice again. Don't spend a whole lot of time because we need to kind of launch them, and they will take a few minutes to stand up. Um, if you, you know, leave your slice, un slice unbound and see where it places it, right? The system will, will find a, a rack for you. Victor, would you walk by and just see what he's doing? Something terribly crazy? <laughs> just to make sure we... <laughs> yeah, Mike, thank you. Just, uh, so they'll just... Look over your shoulder, make sure that somebody's not trying to get a hundred node slice right away because uh, that will just spoil the day for everyone. Catch it. <laughs> yeah.
It's basically once, uh, so you can, uh, one more thing, you can bind your slice in two ways. You can either bind elements of the slice the way I showed you, or right here in the reservation details, you can select the rack for your slice. Right, so if you want your entire slice in one rack, and it's that rack that you want, you want it bound, you can go ahead and select it here. This is also where you select the duration of your slice. The typical duration is 24 hours. You can change it. The maximum is two weeks. Um, this lists may, many more. Some of these are real racks and some of them are not real. I would ask you today to just use the BBN, the Duke, and the RCI uh, XO racks simply because those are, the, those are the most stable and also the newest ones. You try to do others, you're kind of on your own. So again, use M1 large, use DEB6 to GZ file system image. And tomorrow, the GIMI tutorial, you'll actually get to use a more complicated image. Today, we're just trying something simple, as I said. You can specify, again, as I said, you can edit reservation and specify the binding there or not. Uh, you can go to a different controller, select it under Orca controller, select NICTA, and uh, leave it unbound. Then if you're talking to that rack, the only place that the slice can go to is that rack, right? Only XOSM gives you the flexibility of going to different racks. If you're talking to a controller of a particular rack, your slice will only be able to go there. If you try to bind the slice to another rack while talking to a controller of a different rack, you will get an error. It'll say that I don't actually know what you're talking about. And once you're ready, just uh, go ahead and uh, uh, fill in the slice name. You know, use your, use your credential name, just so we know. Uh, and then click Submit Request. Um, it's going to have two fields. Uh, one, you fill in the, the, the again, your credential name, give, give me something, something. And the password is what's given to you on the little piece of paper. Is there anyone in trouble? Is there anyone with questions? Where do you get the name of the slice, Ilya? Where do you get the name of the slice? Where do you get it? Where do you give it? There's a field. Next field uh, right next to the submit button. Right there. Conveniently, right next to the button that you have to press before you submit. And if you do, by the way, you know, it'll yell at you, right? Right. <laughs> we will fix it. Screen real estate is expensive, but if you hover over it, I believe it will actually tell you. Maybe not. Yes. Enter slice ID. Do you see how easy? We've made it easy for you guys. <laughs> so again, I remind you, it, the size and uh, this, oh crap, forgive me, um, the size and image is important if you don't want to get failures today because that's the image that's fairly frequently used and we know it's not going to fail. You try something else, it may also take longer because this is one of the smallest images we use. We want you to get the slices as quickly as possible. You use a very large image, obviously the time will vary. And I will actually talk about a little bit uh, about the delays you may expect to see when provisioning a slice. Is everyone doing well? Is there anyone who is not doing well? Is there everyone who's just lost? Raise your hand if you're in trouble. Somebody will come up. Huh? I'm going to remind people. So when, when it asks you for your credentials, right? It's, it's on the paper. Okay? Yeah, it's on the piece of paper. Try unbinding it. Unbind the slice.
If you're running out of resources, unbind the slice. This is kind of the whole point of, of how Exogeny works, is it, it automatically finds the resources for you. You don't have to go hunting for them. Mike, what's the reason there? Uh, I forgot what right they were going to, but I have okay. to do systems Okay. So I think there's one more question. No, NICTA is, can only be seen through NICTA. That's why if you want to do a slice in Australia, you do it through the NICTA SM. Yes, but you can't make a BBN plus RAN C plus NICTA. No. And we're actually working on exposing some of this information a little bit better so it's clear what can and cannot be accomplished. We realize that right now it, it's an out-of-band knowledge. Our, 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 final, our, 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 our goal is actually to make sure you don't even have to think about it uh, and that all racks can be connected to all other racks. Right now, we actually have a couple of islands. Not, not today, no. Mm -mm. No, I, um, uh, yeah, no. Next time. Next time meaning March? Yeah. I mean, we can do it today. We just this this tutorial. It means it's meant to be basic. Still, uh, we'll do some OVS experimentation next time. But it will be available before March. It's available now. Okay. You can actually read about it. It's there. Yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> I did. I do. Send send an email on the list. Send it. Send an email to the list, the Genie Orca users list. Right. If you have questions about you know how to do things, if you already tried, and you know, send an email. Where did we run out of resources? Did everybody go to BBN rack? Is that what happened? Yeah, BBN said load average for like 22. That's not good. Try other racks. Come on, we have like more of them. And un you know, don't bind your requests if you don't know which rack you want. I mean, you know, we're basically, there's, there's 25 probably people here trying to create slices of five, six, seven nodes uh, on, on the capacity of the system of only about 200 nodes. <laughs> so, we're, you know, we're, we're pretty close. Um, if you've already submitted your slice and if the system gave you a little output saying these are resources, switch to the manifest pane and click on the My Slices button. Type the slice No, click on My Slices button. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's all better now. Yeah, just click on My Slices button and click OK. It will show you what's being done and if there's any failures. It's just in the process. So, yeah, so if you've submitted successfully, sw switch to the manifest pane uh, and uh, right here. Right, and click on my slices button. I don't have any, so I'm not even going to try, but you know, that's the button. <coughs> okay, I'm going to keep going. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this presentation, uh, Denise, thank you for a question. Yeah, so, so what can we do with OpenFlow? We actually can do things with OpenFlow, but this is a fairly basic presentation, so we're not talking about it. You can actually create a slice and attach it to your controller if you want to. Uh, you have to start the controller externally on some publicly available IP address, and the, uh, the options for it are actually all here. It's not that complicated. You go under... Um, a reservation details, you click that it's an open flow reservation, you fill in the information about your slice controller URL, and uh, you launch the slice the same way. Will there be multiple physical links between... It's up to you. It's up to you. Right now it's all one controller. Even if there are multiple links, they will all serve one controller. But, to be honest, given our pre prior experiences, it's almost better if you try using OVS, the soft switch. The, uh, the hardware switches are still not 
behaving in a stable enough fashion for us to use this widely. So I would actually deploy my OVS as VM. You draw your topology, you put OVS in them, and you do whatever you want. It's much easier. And do you have a... Image with OVS? Ask me in a couple of weeks. Yes, I actually have a student working on it. And you know the good thing with OVS is you get different OpenFlow versions, right? With our switch, you only get one O. That's all you can get. We can't, you know, there is no implementation. But with OVS, you can select which one, right? So it's a little bit more flexible. Um, how's it going? Who's got failures? Huh? Oh, you're successful! Yay! Who's got a slice? Yeah! <laughs> okay, uh, let me talk about delays, right? So while your slices are coming up, and the system's going to obviously be quite busy because all of you are essentially trying it all, 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 all at once. It's okay. Let me talk about the VM images. So another unique feature of Exogenie is that it's, kinda, it's a bring your own image test bed. You can create your own virtual machine image. There are many, many ways of doing it, and there are some of them are written up in the wiki. Basically, if you take an OpenStack or a Eucalyptus guide to building an image and follow it, you will build an Exogeny image. We recommend that you put our tools on it in addition to it, but you don't have to. The image just needs to be placed somewhere on a web server. Any web server will do. Obviously, one with higher bandwidth would be better since images tend to be multiple gigabytes in size. We do support uh, multiple image formats and compression formats. So we, for instance, support holy images, images with holes. So it might say that it's a two gig image, but it only, in fact, only maybe 200 megabytes. And that's actually what we recommend. Again, we have guides on the wiki to show you how to do this. Um, yes. Um, we're also working on a facility called Image Playpen. It is about 90% ready. Uh, it is basically a separate OpenStack cluster, and I mentioned that what you're actually doing right now is talking to OpenStack on individual racks, and Eucalyptus, actually, in case of Duke rack. Um, it is a separate OpenStack installation with a nice GUI where you can log in, build your own image, test, make sure it boots, save it, retrieve it, and use it. Right now, unfortunately, and this is, we recognize this as a, as a, as a, as a downside, uh, experimenters are reduced to testing their images by essentially trying to boot a slice, and you don't get enough debugging information out of that if it doesn't boot. And then you kind of have to ask for our help. We're happy to help, but we also recognize we really want to automate this process a little bit and make you, empower you, the experimenters, to do this. So, you know, watch for our announcements. The playpen is almost ready. Uh, and then at that point, you will simply just, uh, you know, through a point and click GUI, you will be able to do this. We do maintain a library of known good images, and we, in fact, encourage the users to contribute to it. Uh, all you need to do is provide us with the URL of the image and a name. Uh, we'd like to have a name attached to it, it's just so if somebody starts reporting issues with that image, we know, you know, we know where to find you. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about the way images actually make it into the testbed. Uh, you put it on a remote web server, right? And you provide us with the URL to it. And that's what's used in the request, right? Uh, the, if you saw the image, the Flux properties file, it had, uh, for each image, it had a name, a URL, and a, and a hash, right? So uh, Orca uses that information in order to retrieve the image if it doesn't have it already at a particular site, register it, and launch, um, launch the uh, VMs with that image. Now, there are obviously multiple delays involved, right? If that image is unknown at that site, there is a delay to download the image to the head node. Then there is a delay to download the image into the worker nodes. Uh, and then there is the delay to actually prepare the image for boot. If the image is frequently used, then that delay is not there, right? Uh, again, if a delay is frequently used, maybe even the image is cached on the worker node. But in the worst case, you can experience significant delays when bringing up a slice with a new image because it has to travel all the way from your web server to each rack where you're trying to stand up a slice and then to each worker node and then get booted. So don't be surprised. The delays to launch slices vary from just a few minutes to hours. And it all depends on the bandwidth. It all depends on a large number of factors that we have no control over. Right? Uh, each image is actually, we know, what we ask you to provide is, is not exactly the URL of the image file. It's actually this type of XML file, very simple. There's only three entries in it. Two of them are optional. 
Uh, one describes a file system and we support file system and Z file system. Z file system is, uh, is compressed and we recommend that you compress because it otherwise gets very expensive on the bandwidth. There's a signature you need to provide and then the URL of the image itself, right? That's, that's the actual file containing the file system image. And you can also provide a kernel and a RAM disk accompanying it. So if you're practicing, if you're, if you're trying to use some new drivers, that's how you do it, right? You build a new kernel, you build a RAM disk with your, with your driver, you attach it to a file system and you use it. Notice that there is no requirement that these are from the same web server. In fact, this XML file can reside on one server and these images can reside on other servers, right? So you can use somebody's file system with your kernel and so on and so forth. There's no, there's no requirement here that these are from the same server, right? They just need to be on a web server. The file itself and its hash is what's we, what we check. Then we read the file and we retrieve the parts of the image, right? How are we doing? Failures? Yes? It's a new one on me, but we discover things like this all the time. So, you know, for issues like this, we have a mailing list, right? So if you're using our tools, or, or if you're using Genie tools, it doesn't really matter. If you're using the Exogeny testbed, you should be on the list, and you should report these. Because if it's a recurring problem, if, you know, or even if not a recurring problem, we will help you, right? That's weird, you know, the GPO pays us to do this. So, you know, don't bang your head against the wall or, or run screaming, you know, try asking for help. Uh, and we actually have an SLA on how often, you know, how quickly we reply. Typically, if you ask a question in the morning, by afternoon somebody will be in touch with you. If you ask a question in the evening, by morning somebody will be in touch with you. Over the weekend, you have to wait until Monday. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I have kids, I have a wife, I am trying to have a life. Uh, maybe I should just give up on it, but uh, some common questions. Can I put my image on your server? I made a very nice image. No, I'm sorry. Web servers are a dime a dozen, right? Find something. Uh, will my image always remain cached at, a, at the rack that I use? No. Um, we can cache it out because if the capacity of the rack exceeds the, uh, excuse me, if the capacity of the rack is not sufficient for all the images being used on it, something will get cached out. You may be unlucky. So. If, you know, if today your slice takes uh, a minute to stand up and tomorrow it takes 10 minutes, that's probably what happened. Nothing to worry about. The next time you use it, it's still cached, right? But one day it may be uncached. Um, will, will building my own image will always, will, will always remain so complicated? Well, yes and no. I mean, it, it is an advanced task. There's only so much we can do to simplify it. We'd like to give you the freedom to be able to do this, but that's not the primary focus of what we do. We kind of point you to the various guides out on the internet which are fairly com comprehensive and describe how to do this. But part of the solution for us is building this image playpen, right? This is where you can try, um, this is where you can try, uh, you know, booting your image. By the way, uh, if you have a manifest, keep clicking the query manifest button, it'll refresh and if all the reservations show active, then you can try logging in. And to log in, you right click on the node and there's a login option there, right? So don't wait for me. Just periodically click on uh, query, uh, uh, query manifest and if all, what? Five, oh, okay, yeah, we're good. Please. Um, this is all too confusing. How will I ever be able to find all this information on my own? Fear not, there's a QR code. Uh, no, <laughs> it just points you to the wiki. Um, you know, the, the point is, this, this wiki is your entry point for information on Exogenie. It links to a number of other wikis, both our own and run by the GPO. Take your time, look through it, use the search option. It's there. Every wiki has a search button, a uh, search field, right? Um, try looking for terms. You use Google. Google actually does a great job of, of caching and making information in our wiki searchable. Just try Google. Exogenie something, something, something. I guarantee you something <laughs> will pop up. So back to the manifests. 
yeah, there's a login to node uh, option. Uh, you should be able to SSH. They, it will ask you for a password because the SSH private key is password protected. It's the same password that's on the piece of paper, as I mentioned in the beginning of this session, right? They don't have to be the same as the password that you entered when you submitted the slice. They just happen to be the same today for simplicity. You can look at the uptime to that the way you'll know we're not lying to you, that your node really just booted. Uh, you can try pinging across nodes. If you remember, you know, if you look back at your request, you can see, or if you look, you know, log into multiple nodes, you'll see what uh, addresses they have, whether you can ping. Uh, hopefully you can. Um, one thing to mention, we, these images that we use today have something called NukaPy tools installed on them. These are the tools that I said we recommend that you install when you build your own image. These are our tools. Um, they're very easy to use and they typically stay in the background and you don't have to know about them. But if you do want to, uh, for debugging purposes or other reasons, to find out, simply run the command nuka. Oh, excuse me, I try, keep trying to click to highlight. Just run this command. It will give you a list of other commands available under this tool set. And they do various things. Uh, don't run the nuka net conf because that will actually attempt to reconfigure the networking in that node. But there's a command, for instance, that displays what this node knows about itself uh, given, given by Orca, about its configuration. There is a command that uh, lists just the boot script that you created, so you can look at that, right? Uh, it's useful, particularly the boot script option is, 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 um, is useful because the uh, node groups, something I forgot to mention, and I apologize, the boot scripts for node groups actually can be templated. Uh, because when you have a hundred nodes and you want it to do the same script with just minor modifications uh, for each node, you obviously are not going to create a hundred scripts. You want to create one script and you have it, in the, and there's a template engine that can do it, for, uh, can actually process it and customize it for you. So this is what we do. So if your uh, template isn't working and you want to find out why, using the Nuka boot script tool, the command, will actually show you what your boot script looks after the template engine is done with it. So if you know, you can that way debug what went wrong, right? If if it maybe it didn't do the right substitution, maybe you you know made a typo in the uh, in the macro, or maybe we have a bug. All of these are possible, right? But this this is a useful thing to do. I lied, Denise. <laughs> I actually had a section on open flow slices. Oh, okay, cool. uh, this how how the slice is doing. I'm, nobody's screaming. Okay, good. Um, so you can start your own open flow controller. I showed it, right? Uh, you can, in fact, start a slice, I think. We haven't tried it, but it, it should be possible. You can start a slice with one node, put a controller in it, then start another slice and point it to the IP address of, public IP address of that node, right? So if, if, you're really, if you're really strapped for compute power and you don't want to run it on your laptop or something, you can do it that way. Let us know how it went because we haven't tried it. <laughs> but uh, it should work. Uh, I mean, there's no reason. So one user can stand up two slices? Oh, absolutely. You can have as many slices as you want. That's why it's not my slice button. It's my slices. <laughs> Plural. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of sort of the, how many slices can I have? Well, in principle, as many as you want. Obviously, there are other users. So we do ask you to be respectful of other users and when you don't need the slice, please click the delete button. Uh, that's right next to the, uh, in the manifest view. If you don't, the slice will go away because the system will respect the term that you asked for. But if you happen to not need it, be nice and release the resources, right? I mean, it's a cooperative test bed. Uh, at, per, at present, we have no form of preemption. So if somebody gets in, somebody gets in, they, they get to use the resources. Um, open flow slices and mesoscale. You can use mesoscale from Exogeny. Uh, you, 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 used to, you have to use, at this point, at that point, you have to use two systems together. You have to use foam to create your open flow slice, and you have to use Orca to create your, um, your compute nodes, right? So, for instance, to attach, uh, to attach a node to a mesoscale, uh, to a mesoscale uh, VLAN, I would create a node, I would create a broadcast link, I would link it to it, I would say edit properties, I would say VLAN 1750, remember that, that tag, that happens to be, you know. And submit that, right, and ignore this part of the slice. And when it comes up, which what I'll have is a slice of consisting of one node, which is connected to this special VLAN that leads to mesoscale, right? And then you can go to foam and create your slice there, right? Why is mesoscale different from all these links? 
Yeah. Why? I, I don't have an answer. Okay. It's uh, it's different. It, it's you know it's a separate aggregate, so you have to talk to it separately. Physically, they may they may be running on the same physical links. They Just they are and they are and oh, mesoscale is an independent aggregate, right? These are open flow switches. Oh yeah, these are open flow switches deployed somewhere in NLR in several locations. And you, if you to to use it, you have to learn a little bit about mesoscale. And this is not the tutorial about it, right? What we show you is how you can get onto mesoscale from the racks. Right, so because mesoscale by itself is just open flow switches, you have to have endpoints. Orca can provision the endpoints for you, and then you have to talk to Foam and learn a little bit more about mesoscale to actually do the uh, wide area uh, open flow experiments there. Right. How about ESnet and some other nodes that I have seen in loops? You have them. I mean when I have more racks, yes. When I have more racks. Oh, but you have them in flutes somehow? We do. Uh, some, w these are called shadow domains. Uh, they, they shadow real resources that we sometimes use. So, you know, we use this system for both genie and non-genie activities. Oh, um, so, yes, I mean, yeah, actually there, there is some reachability over ESnet to some sites, but it's restricted. <laughs> um, What's coming to Exogenie in the near future? Uh, and that means two to four months. Well, more racks, that's obvious, right? One of the things we're going to be doing is upgrading to the latest version of OpenStack. It's actually SX plus, SX plus plus, maybe Folsom minus minus. Uh, we use the Red Hat version of, of, of SX. And what this will do is, first of all, it will bring the quality of service support for links back. And I know some of you will be very happy about it because you've been asking. And we apologize for this long delay, but it will be back. We expect better stability. Those of you who have used the testbed might know you occasionally get a cryptic error saying the VM just did not stand up and you just have to try again. We hope to see fewer of those. And we actually, uh, those of you again who've been on our users list know that the testbed's going offline for a month right after the GC. The reason for it is precisely this upgrade. It's very disruptive and we just didn't think we could do it in kind of a gradual fashion. Uh, the image playpen I mentioned, that's coming. Uh, more racks. Uh, we expect to have better firmware, improved firmware on the actual backplane switches, the open flow switches. Uh, that actually will also provide us with better quality of service support. We will have hybrid mode where we can do both VLANs and open flow. Uh, right now we do everything through open flow, which is not always optimal. And uh, I think this is it. Uh, thank you for attending the tutorial. Uh, we have no time, we have minus five minutes. Uh, but I will be here for a few minutes if you want to ask some questions. Uh, please return your forms, your signed forms, to just put them over here on this corner. Uh, memory sticks as well. Uh, and uh, delete your slices if you don't mind, just so we don't have to go and do it for you. Because there is another tutorial coming tomorrow. Yeah, Mike is teaching it. And, and yes, tomorrow, uh, Mike Zink in the back uh, will be teaching an extensive gimme tutorial where you learn not to just how to create slices, but how to actually to, how to instrument them, how to take measurements out of slices, how to save those measurements, which is a much more important thing to do. Today's tutorial is intended to be very basic and uh, only targeted the creation of slices. Tomorrow's tutorial is much more involved. It's three hours long, no breaks, no lunch. Nothing. Just, yes, and until the bitter end. No, but it's more fun, stuff like